Hey everybody, Joe here with Speedway Motors Tech Talk, and we're here today to start working on the fuel system for our 68 C10 project. And the first thing we're going to do here is the tank. Now this is an underbed conversion tank that we make here in our shop, and this allows you to move the tank from behind the seat in the cab back here where it does all sorts of good things. Increases your rear weight bias, uh, just gets the gas out of the cab, which is always a good thing allows you to shave the fuel filler from the side of the cab to clean up the lines of the truck. Uh, just lots of advantages to doing it this way. And we also offer these f in a standard and an EFI version. So standard version is just going to have your filler and your five bolt adapter for your sending unit. The EFI version has this ring that allows you to bolt in an in-tank pump module that'll make an EFI conversion or an LS swap like we've done way easier. We offer these for lots of different classic trucks. It's not just Chevys, not just C10s. We're gonna get started here. First thing we have to do is actually mount the tank. All right, we're just laying out our holes. We're gonna drill the holes in the tank flanges first and then transfer those to the frame and then, and then drill all of our holes so we can get this bolted up. And the tank just lifts in from the bottom, the flanges go on the bottom of the frame rails. And once we get it kind of positioned the way that we want it to be in here, we're gonna mark our holes on the bottom of the frame and, and transfer the holes that we've already drilled and uh, then we'll be ready to bolt it up. All right, our holes are drilled, we're ready to go back in with our tank. We noticed when we had this mocked up that it's gonna be tight here to get a bolt in and get it into the hole once the tank is installed. So we're gonna go ahead and install the bolts first and then just bring the tank up underneath them. We also noticed that it's gonna be hard to get a socket around a regular hex head bolt. So we're using these button head Allen screws and that'll make it easier for us to just stick an Allen wrench down in there and hold it when we tighten it. And because everything is kind of hanging from the bottom of the frame, we're going to use these fender washers on the bottom to kind of help distribute some of the load a little bit and uh, help this to all stay where we want it to be. All right, now that we have the tank installed, we're going to move on to our pump. And we're using our Speedway Motors submersible EFI retrofit fuel pump module. And what this is, is some pieces that we make here in the shop that allow us to adapt this Walbro pump and then offer it in kind of a universal package so that you can cut this down and then move, move it to whatever depth it needs to be to work in your, your tank. Uh, these are also designed to work with an existing tank. If you have a non-EFI tank and you want to adapt one of these, this ring allows you to basically cut the hole and then it kind of sandwiches the existing tank and, and will allow you to adapt it. Since our tank is already set up for this EFI module like this, we're gonna just proceed without this ring, take our measurements, cut it, assemble all of this, and then we'll be ready to install it. All right, the first thing that we need to do is measure the depth of our tank and then transfer it here to allow us to cut it to make it fit. This will go all the way down to 16 inches, so it will accommodate a really deep tank. Uh, ours is only, it's about nine and a sixteenth from the bottom of this flange to the bottom of the tank. We're gonna give ourselves just a little bit of um, wiggle room there and mark this at exactly nine inches. And then by the time we stack our gasket in and cinch everything down, uh, you know, we should have just a little bit of, of space against the bottom of the tank. Really you want it just as close as it can be, but you don't want it holding off the, everything as you're trying to tighten it down. So we'll make our, our marks at nine inches and then we'll proceed to cutting this and assembly. Obviously, there are gonna be lots of different ways you can cut this based on what tools you have in your shop. We're just gonna use a good old hacksaw and uh, then square everything up with the, with the grinder and the file. 
All right, now that we got it cut, we kind of deburred it. Obviously, you don't want any chunks or burrs that are gonna float around inside the tank. And we're even gonna kind of wipe it down here to, to make sure we don't have anything that's gonna contaminate the inside of our clean new tank. And then we'll be ready to, to start assembly. Before we start assembling, we, we did take this back to the tank and actually check to make sure that it was the right depth. Good idea before you put this all together and then have to pull it all back apart in case you mismeasured or whatever. So as we, as we assemble these two pieces together, we're also gonna incorporate these little brackets which hold the pump and they'll sort of sandwich together like so with one screw. There's two of these, so we'll install the other one at a height that's appropriate to hold the pump. And test fit it, so maybe like so. All right, with all of that done, we're going to assemble the fittings into the top plate. These are labeled with what, what they need to be, so positive and negative for the, the battery connections, pressure, return, and vent. So it's all pretty straightforward. We're gonna use plenty of pipe dope on these and, and install our fittings that are included. And we're gonna clamp these in the vise and snug them down all the way before we move on. Next step is to install the pump. And you want the, the sock on the bottom of the pump to basically be touching the bottom of this bracket. And these brackets inside here have a little slot through them that allow you to use either a zip tie or a hose clamp. We're gonna use hose clamps just for a little bit of extra safety factor. And then we'll cinch our pump down and start cutting our lines. Next up, we're gonna to move to cutting our lines and we're gonna start with the return. And you want the bottom of the return to be three quarters of an inch above the, the base of the, the sump. So we're gonna take our measurement here and then install it on the hose barb and then move on to our pressure line. All right, and with the return on, we're gonna cut and install the pressure line. This line is meant to be a, a submersible high pressure line. We're gonna install that with some hose clamps and then we'll move on to our wiring. All right, with the lines assembled, we're gonna move on to the wiring. It comes with this plug pre-assembled to just plug right into the pump. We're gonna cut it to length and then we're gonna solder and heat shrink the ring terminals on and uh, then we'll be done, ready to install. And then make sure to pay attention. We're gonna put the, the screws that come through here act as the terminals. Make sure to pay attention to which one is positive and which one is negative. Obviously the red on this harness is, is positive and black is negative. And these, these are the screws that act as the terminals and it's important that you insulate this, this plate from the, the current so these nylon washers and these O-rings act as the, the insulation. So make sure that these are installed as they should be, otherwise you're gonna have, have bigger problems. And we'll spin the nut on here to hold everything until we get our truck side wiring attached here. There's the positive hooked up. And then the negative, we'll put our, our screw through here, followed by the washer, the brass washer, followed by then the nylon P90 
piece that will go in the hole and make sure that it's turned so the step goes inside the hole. And then that does it on the, the internal side. And then externally, the two O-rings that go through the middle will go on, followed by the outside collared nylon washer, followed by flat washer, and lock washer and nut. All right, so there our pump module is assembled. Obviously, we'll install the gasket and then move on to installing it in the tank. The screws that came with it were a little bit long because they're meant to go through that, that retainer ring on a, a regular non-EFI tank. Since we have an EFI tank, we grabbed some shorter 1032 screws, and so we're ready to go. All right, now that we've got the pump installed, we're gonna move on to the next component of our fuel system, and we're gonna use our combination fuel filter and regulator. And this is kind of a slick piece based on what you might find on like a C5 Corvette. And it's got a filter and a 58 PSI regulator integrated into it, and also has the return on it, so it can really eliminate some, some length of line and make your plumbing kind of a neat setup. The other thing that this particular piece does is it already has AN6 fittings on it, whereas if you're using the OE part, you're using some adapters to get out to an AN6. So this is just the cleanest possible way for us to do this. It's worth noting this is good up to about 450 horsepower on a naturally aspirated engine. If we decide to go big on this at some point and, and add a bunch of power, we're going to talk about doing like a bypass regulator and some billet filters. But for where we're at right now, this is just perfect. We're gonna mount it right here on the side of the frame rail, and then we're gonna run our lines through the, to the pump, and we'll be ready to move on. All right, and mounting it is really just that simple since it's got the little mounting tab already on it. We're gonna move on to measuring and cutting our lines, and uh, then we'll be about done here. All right, now we're ready to move on to the fuel line, and we're using this Earl's Vapor Guard hose. And there are lots of reasons that we love this stuff. Uh, it's, it's resistant to, if you happen to get some ethanol in the tank or something like that, uh, it, it's resistant to that, it's not gonna self-destruct. And it's also really easy to work with. Uh, you know, use it just almost like you would use old, regular, low pressure line and, and hose clamps. But instead, this is suitable to high pressure fuel injection systems like we're using here. Uh, clamps are real easy to use as opposed to like a push lock where you got to really wrestle it on the fitting. Uh, this again, it just functions like a regular old hose barb and hose clamp. So we're going to start by installing these 90 degree fittings, which are also Earl's specially made to be used with this hose. And uh, we're going to install those on the pump end here, and then we're going to fish this through the, the frame and make it up to the regulator and the filter. We're going to kind of work backwards with the hose and feed it through the cross member like so. Feed it through here, feed it through this cross member. And then this is going to be the, the pressure side. We'll tighten everything up here once we get this all kind of kind of assembled the way we want it to be. And the filter has the direction marked on it with the arrow. So this is the supply line here. So we're going to use the, one of these straight fittings on the supply line and mark our length here. Okay, and then we're ready to cut this part. So that will be supply side. Let's do our return before we cinch that down because that's going to be make everything easier to get to. So here's our return fitting. Do the same thing with this one, kind of feed it back through the direction we want it to go. And to mark this for the return. 
It's gonna be really important that you don't get your wires crossed here and that you double check to make sure that your pressure side is your pressure side and your return is your return. That pretty much does it for the main components of our fuel system here. We've got our underbed tank, our in-tank pump, and then our filter and regulator. And you know, for anything with more power than we're making, we might want to do some more trick pieces, but this is the most straightforward way to get there with a 430 horsepower engine. Uh, of course, we've got some work to do before we can run the thing. Uh, we'll do one line up from the filter all the way to the fuel rail. Uh, we want to get our cab on and exhaust routed and some other things to make sure that we're running that in the right place. And we're going to clean up our lines, make sure that none of these are rubbing on any threads that are going to cut through them or anything like that. Obviously, we still have to add our fuel level sender once we know what gauge we're running. Our through the bed floor filler we'll install when we put the bed on. But this really does it for the, the main pieces here. Uh, if you have any questions about your own fuel system, feel free to let us know, and thanks for watching.